Good afternoon everybody. The Marmot Tours cycling trip to the Picos in northern Spain. What's it like? Is it a good place to cycle? Should you spend your money? Stick around and you'll find out. Now I have just returned from a week cycling in the Picos in northern Spain with Marmot Tours and I had a fabulous time. Now the first thing you're going to want to know is where are the Picos? Now I had not heard of them, you may have heard of them, you may not. The Picos is a um, hilly come mountainous region uh, south of the Basque country, so south of the Pyrenees in north western Spain and it is accessed by flying to Bilbao which is what I did and then a three-hour taxi ride to get to the Picos area. Now the Marmot Tours trip uh, is six days of cycling uh, starting in a place called Potes and Potes is about three hours from Bilbao. So we had a, a transfer in the van and the taxi. Uh, the vast majority of the people, and there were 18 riders on the trip, uh, took their own bicycles, but you can also hire from Marmot Tours if you want. They have very nice uh, titanium bicycles, SRAM Force gearing, uh, 3432 uh, cassette on the back. So they are good bikes, they're good quality. If you like to take your own, if you've got a bike bag, then obviously that's an option. Or if you want, you can hire. Uh, it's bikes out at about £240 for the week, which is quite high, including insurance, but you don't have the faff of transporting your own bike. So what happens? Well, this was what Marmot Tours call a classic Coles trip, and that is distinct from a raid. Now, on a raid, you go from basically A to B. So, for example, the raid Alpine goes north to south from Geneva to Antibes. The raid uh, Pyrenees goes uh, west to east uh, over the Pyrenees, and you have to complete those in a certain time scale and you are moving from one hotel to another every night. So it's quite a lot of time pressure and there's a certain amount of stress. A classic Coles trip generally means that you're staying in a hotel sometimes for more than one night and you have a choice of routes each day which uh, Marmot Tours call a classic route or a challenge route. The challenge route is longer and it involves more cycling. So you can choose what you want to do each day. If you're feeling strong and you want to do the challenge route you can. If you're feeling weak and you don't fancy doing the challenge route you you don't have to you can do the classic route uh, if you don't want to cycle at all you can do although on some of the days because the route is transferring from hotel to hotel if you don't cycle you're going to have to travel in the van which is possible but obviously you're a cycling you're on a cycling holiday so you're going to want to ride now as I said, there were uh, 18 riders on the trip. They're all males. Now, I have been on previous Marmot tours where there are uh, a few female riders. And let's be honest, it's nice to have some female company on a ride. Uh, 18 men together. The old testosterone can tend to get a bit high. The uh, uh, sexist banter can tend to be a bit high. And sometimes there's a lot of battling on the roads to see who's first. But with some uh, female company, that tends to lighten, lighten the load uh, a little bit. I'm sure you know what I mean. Uh, anyway, uh, 18 guys. Now, on each of the previous Marmot tours that I've been on, and I've done three of them, the Raid Alpine, the Raid Pyrenees, and the Classic Coles and the Dolomites, there has been one person who I am mm, uh, inclined to call a tosser, although that's perhaps a little unfair. I am known for being a bit snobbish. I'm known for being a bit of a tosser myself. So it may well be that uh, I have been the tosser on the trips and as opposed to me thinking other people are the tossers. But anyway, on this trip, there were 18 guys and we all got on really well. Now, if there were people that fell out, I wasn't aware of it. So it was a nice group, uh, a nice group of people to cycle with, very nice chats, very nice uh, time, not too much testosterone, not too much of the sexist banter. So it was great in that sense. Now, what about the uh, cycling? Well, uh, I'm what you would call uh, an average club cyclist. I'm not, I'm not great. Uh, I'm not entirely rubbish. Uh, I did the classic routes on most of the days, not necessarily because I had to, but I was riding with a mate of mine called Ian, who I met on a classic Coles trip uh, to the Dolomites last year. And we like to sometimes just ride along, have a chat, have a stop. So we're not thrashing ourselves uh, on the bike. But if you want, uh, and I did on the uh, classic route, 
essentially. I did just under 300 miles and about 25,000 feet of climbing. Now, if you did the challenge route each day, you would have done about 500 miles and about 55,000 feet of climbing. So if you're wondering whether the PCOS is tough enough for you, well, you, you can, you, you're going to have a great time. If you're wondering whether the PCOS is too tough for you, no, no, it isn't. You can do what I did, do the classic routes, and you have a great time. Now, uh, what is good about riding in the, in the PCOS? Well, first of all, you have quite similar scenery to the Pyrenees or the Dolomites or the Alps. In other words, you have some quite high peaks, uh, some very hilly areas, not quite as high as you'd get in the Alps, the Dolomites. Uh, there was some snow on the, on the top of the highest mountains, but not vast amounts. The big difference to riding in those other places is the uh, quietness of the roads. There were some times and some days where we saw hardly any cars, we saw very few motorcycles and frankly if you're riding say on in the Dolomites it can be a bit spoilt by motorcycles. But in the Picos that doesn't happen. Yes there are motorbikes but there's not many of them. Yes there are cars but there are not many of them. Cyclists there are very few. We maybe saw mm, a dozen, 20 cyclists at the most throughout the whole week. Uh, apart from our group of 18 cyclists. So that gives you a clue as to, as to just how quiet the place is. The roads are generally very good, uh, good quality tarmac, nice and wide. Uh, there were a few sections of rough surface, uh, a few sections of uh, potholes and ruts, but, but not very many. So what about some of the famous climbs? Well, if you watch the Vuelta, there are two climbs that you'll probably be familiar with. One is called the Lagos de Covadonga, and that is a climb that, right, that goes up about 25k or so uh, to a pair of lakes, the Lagos de Covadonga. Beautiful alpine-like lakes uh, up above uh what do you call it high up in in the hills decent height nice long steady climb not a steep climb to get there although on this on that route to the Covadonga there was about a uh, 800 meter section or so where it was about 16 percent so quite quite hard but generally the climbs that you encounter although long and 20 25 30 kilometer climbs was not unusual they didn't generally rise above five five percent six percent average now Sometimes that could be a bit misleading. In other words, you might have fairly long sections of one or two percent, and then some sections of seven, eight, or nine percent. So there were some some steepish climbs, but generally uh, e easily doable climbs. The other climb that you uh, may have heard of is probably the toughest climb in pro cycling, and certainly it's the toughest climb that I've attempted. Last year in the Classic Coles of the Dolomites, I did the Mortirolo, which is probably the second hardest climb, and I managed that. I did not manage the Angliru. Now, the vast majority of the people did manage the Angliru. A couple of people walked the last couple of K, so it is doable. Uh, it's 13k long and the average is about 13 or 14 percent I think but there are fairly long sections that are about 20 21 22 percent now I might have been able to manage it if I was two stone lighter or if the weather had been better now on the day we did the angle route it was pouring with rain uh, I have to wear uh, sunglasses because my eyesight is very poor because I wear glasses uh, if I, my glasses get covered in rainwater, then they mist up. If I take them off, then I can't see anything. If I put them on, I can't see anything. It was pouring with rain, it was foggy, and it got to a point where I thought, I don't fucking know where I'm going. I could have been two feet away from a precipice as far as I was concerned. So, so I stopped. And frankly, I got about 5k, and that's being generous, into the climb. But the other people managed it. So if you want to do a really tough climb, and you're up to it, well then do it. If you want to try a really tough climb and maybe succeed, then do so. If you want to try a really tough climb and fail like I did, then do so. But at least you've seen what it was like. So the hotels, generally sort of three-star hotels. So they're, they're decent quality. They're not, they're not wonderful hotels. And the food generally was, was very good. Being on a Marmot tour, you all eat together and you all have a set meal. So there are sometimes some choices 
for uh, starter or, or main course. Uh, sometimes you don't really get a choice, but the food is generally very good. It's generally plentiful, generally very tasty. Uh, being in northern Spain, we had some Spanish delicacies. We had some Spanish tapas. The only thing I would say is that the Spaniards, like uh, much of Europe, frankly, are not massive on vegetables and they are big on meat. So if you're a vegetarian, well, you're going to be subsisting on salad, basically. And if you're a vegan, well, for, to be honest, I don't know what you eat. The, the chief ingredient in Spanish cooking is pig. So, and, and sometimes you feel as if they eat every last bit of the pig, and they probably do. So you get, you get ham or jamon, jamon, they call it jamon, or you get um, pork. That comes from pig, doesn't it? Or you get uh, bacon, you get bacon. Uh, you get sausages, generally made of pork. You get, um, what else do you get from a pig? Uh, fat, yeah, it's quite a lot of fat. Uh, I had one dish on uh, one day, which was uh, lunch in a sort of typical Spanish restaurant, and it was beans, they quite, quite like their beans. So a big dish of beans with uh, a bit of meat in it, uh, a bit of black pudding, uh, an enormous bit of fat, like a fatberg. Didn't they find a fatberg in, in Sidmouth that was the, the size of the Titanic? Well, there was a bit of, there was a bit of fatberg in my soup that was the size of the Titanic. Um, nice crunchy bit of bacon um, and some other bit of pig. So if you like pig, you're in, uh, you're in clover. In fact, you could even say you're like a pig in shit if you go to northern Spain because you get a lot of pig. If you don't like pig and if you don't like meat and if you're a, if you're a vegan, well... Take your own food. That's all, that's all I can say. Take a bag of rice. Take um, uh, what else is it vegans eat? Broccoli. Take your own broccoli. Um, so we had some vegetables, but not much in the way of vegetables. The other thing they didn't do in the hotels that we stayed at, and whether this is a general Spanish thing or not, I don't know, is the puddings. The puddings were rubbish. There was there was one evening where we got an apple. An apple, for fuck's sake, for pudding. The, the waiter came out, there was 18 of us, right? So the waiter comes out and, he, and he's got 18 little plates and each one has got an apple on it. It's a big apple, like that, okay? It's like a basketball. And he plugs it down and we're all looking at it and you think, ah, oh, okay, right, you're going you're gonna to cut the top off and it's going to be filled with, with souffle or ice cream or, or coolie or, or whatever it's called. But it's not, it's an apple, it's a fucking apple. No, who has an apple for a pudding? Uh, anyway, I, uh, the, the rest of the time, if you didn't get an apple, um, you got a sort of uh, creme caramel type of stuff. You know, you know that very sweet, uh, rather sloppy um, kind of concoction that, that some people like, but I'm, I'm, I must say uh, I'm, I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big fan. So it may be these the hotels that we stayed in, but the, the puddings generally were rubbish. So what about the support from Marmot Tours? Well, the support you get from Marmot Tours is brilliant. We had two guides, one of whom was James. He's the owner of the company. Uh, the other whom was, uh, was called Matt. Uh, this was only his third tour, and they are brilliant. They organise everything. They are they drive two vans, so there is uh, uh, nearly always a van stopping either at the top of a coal or or halfway up up a coal or at the base of a coal. So if you're uh, wearing uh, arm warmers or leg warmers or something because you, you, you need them for a descent, then when you get to the bottom of the descent, the van is there and you can take them off again. Or they're waiting at the top of the coal, so when you get up there and it's a bit cold, you can add on some extra clothes. Plus they stop at the side of the road. They've got water, they've got fruit, they've got snacks, they've got nuts, M&Ms, raisins, dried apricots, stuff like that. Melon, apples, even apples. Um, so you get fabulous support from Marmot Tours. They're really nice people. They're really helpful. Now, it, you know, it sounds, uh, it, it maybe like it sounds like an advert for Marmot Tours, and, and maybe it is, but they're not paying me any money for this, unless they want to, of course. They're not paying me any money for this. I'm saying it because I really enjoy the tours that I've been on. And I said to a, a couple of the guys that on, on the tour, the first time I met them, I said, if you've done one Marmot Tour, you've probably done one, more than one. Because people go back. There's a guy on the trip, uh, Keith, he'd done 10, 10, count them, 10 Marmot Tours. Because... People love them. They go to great places. They provide you with great support. It's it's good value. Um, I've not been on another cycling tour, so it's difficult for me to compare it. But the, some of the guys had been on other tours, and they said that somebody had been on a couple of Rafa tours, and they said that Marmot tours was by far, far and away, much better than the Rafa experience. 
Um, price is about 1450 quid, something like that for a week. You generally play a single room supplement, which is about 300 quid or so. So it's probably about 1700, 1750 quid. Is that good value for a week? Well, I think it's good value um, because you get great support. You get great routes. They give you the, the routes each day. They give you the Garmin routes. So you know where you're going. They tell you what to expect. They give you recommended restaurants. They pick nice hotels. They transport your luggage between the hotels. So it's all, it's all done for you. All you've got to do is turn up with your bike if you're taking your own bike or hire a bike if you want to hire a bike and, and you ride and you meet some great people. Um, most of the people are on Strava. If you're a, a fast, uh, elite, even level cyclist, you're going to meet people of your own level. If you're somewhere in the middle, you're going to meet people of your own level. If you're uh, relatively new to cycling, yes, you have to be able to cope with some from fairly difficult climbs and some fairly long distances but if you can do that you will generally meet somebody who you can ride with uh, even if not every day then uh, on on some of the days so you make you make good friends you meet a great set of people and the Picos is a fabulous area in which to cycling I'm I'm surprised at how little known the Picos are as a destination because in terms of as I say scenery in terms of the quality of the roads in terms of the quietness of the place it is a superb place to cycle so there you have it a great location a great place a great company Marmot Tours to cycle with should you spend your money yes you should uh, is it worth it yes it is should you go to the Picos yes you should so uh, if you like these videos you can give me a thumbs up if you don't like these videos you can give me a thumbs down if you want to subscribe press the subscribe button down below and you'll get an email each time i upload a new, a new video which isn't every week but it is fairly regular and you can uh, follow my other things if you want to see um, my videos that i made of the classic coals of the dolomite uh, well just look uh, amongst my videos and you'll find them there so hope you enjoyed it see you next time